Welcome back to another review by Mega Train Lover. Today we're having a look at a new locomotive which I got last week at the Bluebell Railway. And as you can see, it's by Backman. You can tell it is a Patriot class. You can also tell that the locomotive is not in the box. I've taken it out, I've given it a run in, DCC'd it, um, etc. Um, however, um, I saw this model in the carriage shop at Horsted Canes for a very good price, which I couldn't resist. And it's a model which, um, you know, it's a very nice addition to my collection, I feel personally. So, um, if we look at the box, you can see that, you know, it is second hand. There is a bit of wear and tear to the box, but overall it's in really nice condition. Um, you know, it's not, there's nothing broken or anything. Obviously not the best condition, but still not not too bad. If we turn to the side, you can see um, product code is 31-211. It's a Patriot, number 45543, Home Guard. It's in British Railways Green with the late crest. It says it takes an 8-pin DCC decoder, which I've already fitted to the locomotive. If we turn to the back, you can see you get tons of information about the Patriot class. If you would like to read um, but basically the Patriot class they were a class of 52 express passenger steam locomotives which were built for the London Midland and Scottish Railway between 1930 and 1934 um, a couple of the class members were built using by rebuilding some large Clortons uh, what they basically did was they got the chassis of the Royal Scott class, which by that point had already been um, in service for about three or four years, um, and they took the boiler of the Clawton class, which is quite an old LNWR design, and they basically fitted it, and that became the Patriot class. Now, out of uh, the 52, 42 were built at Crew Works, and 10 of them were built at Derby Works, and they were built to the design of Sir Henry Fowler, who was the chief mechanical engineer for the LMS prior to uh, William Stanier, who was appointed in 1934. 1933-1934, um, around that time. Um, after the war, 18 of the class were rebuilt with Stanier Type 2A boilers, and they became similar in appearance to the rebuilt Royal Scots. Um, but even before their rebuilding, they were they were fairly similar in appearance to the Royal Scott class uh, prior to them receiving Type 2A boilers. Um, but the so 18 of them were rebuilt. The rest of the class were all remained in original condition with their parallel boilers, the Patriot class. Um, they were all withdrawn in the 1960s. Sadly, none of them have been preserved, but there is one currently under construction. Um, which will be known as the Unknown Warrior. Um, not too sure where the progress is, but uh, from the pictures I've seen, um, they're doing they're doing pretty well. But I mean, if anyone knows um, any update on the Unknown Warrior, the, the new build Patriot class, uh, do let me know in the comments below. I'd really really appreciate it because it's fan because you know, like all new build projects, it's a fantastic um, it's a fantastic project. Right. Um, anyway, let's put the box to one side. And I shall bring the loco right here. So here's the locomotive, the tender, because it's got the older style connection. The tender is right here. Put the tender to one side, but we'll have a look at the engine first. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what can I say? Aside from the fact that she looks gorgeous. What else is there to say? Well, let's start with the beginning. As usual, headlights I fitted myself. Brake pipe, um, that was already fitted. This is a second hand model, so the details were fitted, but, but yeah, but you don't, but uh, some of these details you have to fit yourself, which is fine, you know, it's pretty standard. Well, let's start at the front. You can see you get a really nice, um, looking smoke box door that's you know it's a very typical kind of midland railway style um door smoke box door with all the um all the kind of handles that keep keep it shut um there's the number four five five four three and the shed code is t 
10K, which I'm not entirely sure what it is. I haven't researched that beforehand. I do apologize. Um, but I'm sure you can have a look in Google, which is what we'll do. Let's do. Yeah, let's clean it a bit. Let's have a look. Oh, look at the wheels. Just look how intricate and look how intricate all the valve gear is. It's absolutely brilliant. There's the nameplate, Home Guard, uh, which obviously is a which is a separate piece, but the nameplate itself isn't etched. I'm not too sure if you can get etched nameplates for this. I'm not entirely sure, but um, obviously this is this is not the newest model in the world. It's it's about a 10, 15 year old tooling, but nonetheless it still looks really, really nice. Uh, let's turn to the other side. It's just as nice. You see, you get um, so you get the um, the lubricator boxes on both sides. You on this side, you also get um, I think these are the injector pipes, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but uh, but yeah, no, the the detail obviously m much of the detail is separately fitted and looks really nice. Um, one thing which is a little bit distracting is this huge seam across the top of the boiler. Um, obviously it is needed because of the way they manufacture it but I think I feel Backman could have done better to kind of cover that up that yeah that I'll, I'll have to mark it down slightly for that. that that is a little bit annoying but aside from that it looks to be a really nice model um, you get the safety valves and the whistle one, one feature I do like is the fact that the roof vent actually moves it's a really nice I think that's a really nice touch when they do that it's similar to my uh, Jubilee class. Unlike my Jubilee class, the smoke box door doesn't open. Um, but yeah, it's <laughs> there's nothing much else to say about that really. I mean, you can't you can't have everything. But I mean, you know, for the price I paid for this, it's yeah. I think it's you know anything like this, moving roof vent is more than enough. The cab. Here's the cab. The cab looks really nice. Obviously, not all of it is painted, but you know, um, it's still it's still a very reasonable looking cab. And I forgot to mention that it does indeed have sprung buffers on both the engine, and also if I just bring the tender, sprung buffers on the tender as well. And yeah, so all in all, the engine looks really nice. Now let's have a look at the tender. So I'll just um, just put the engine down. Okay, and let's have a look at the tender, which is a Fowler style tender, obviously, because it was the engine was designed by Sir William, um, um, Sir William, sorry, Sir Henry Fowler. Um, yeah, no, it's a really nice looking tender. Um, you have this, not entirely sure what this is, I think it, this is a guard of some sorts, not entirely sure, anyone knows, do let me know. Um, the coal load actually looks all right. I do kind of have a go at Backman for how their coal loads look, but I think this is this this looks really quite nice. You get the water filler cap at the back here. You get a vacuum pipe at the back, which has also been fitted um, by the previous owner. And sprung buffers, as mentioned. Uh, you get the British Railways late crest, which looks really nice. Here's the front of the tender where you get the uh, the handbrake and the water scoop um, controls. The I believe no, there's no water scoop at the bottom, but I, I imagine this would have had uh, water scoops. Oh, but sorry, a water scoop, but uh, but yeah, no, no, there's none. Uh, there's none that's been modelled on the. Yeah, there's none. None that's been modelled on. On here, but that's fine. You don't really see it. I mean, it's a nice touch. It's a nice feature when they do show it, but you don't. You don't obviously when when you're running the loco and it's like that. You don't really see it anyway. So, yeah. But no, overall, it's um, overall the tender looks really quite nice. The loco, uh, the overall the, the entire loco looks really nice. Forgot to mention, it's quite heavy. You know what? For its you know it's not a huge you know it's not a huge engine. It's quite big, but it's not it's not massive compared to something like a Princess Royal or a Duchess. It's you know it's relatively medium size, but it's got good weight, so it won't have any problems with traction. But let's see how the loco performs. So here we have the Backman Patriot class on the track. And what we're going to do is we're going to select a number 
and watch her go. And away she goes. I've put it on to halfway, which is running in speed, although she has been running already. Oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, apart from that minor hiccup, she's uh, she's running very well. Very smooth runner. Let's get a few shots of her passing. Yeah, as you can see, very nice performer. Very smooth. Can't really hear the motor. Yeah, spot on. Excellent model. So just to conclude this video, I'm very, very happy with it. For the price I paid, I think it's an excellent model, obviously not the newest um, in terms of detail, but yeah, no matter, it's a really nice model and I do recommend it. If you can get one at a good price in any livery, be it you know, DR Green, LMS, whatever, I highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, it's just stopped again, but that's no, fine. Um, I'll have to look at that slight issue, but it's fine. I, do, I still recommend it. It's a fantastic model. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, and I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.